Right, this is Sheila. Um, it's the 11th of July 2024. I'm over at Pretty. Now I haven't been over here since... Well I did get over here on a walk, but I don't know if I stopped at the church. Um, I think I might have done. Um, so even though I didn't have Alberta, I think I got a bus to Cheddar and I walked on my Cheddar to Wells walk. I think I might have stopped at the church. I didn't do the Barrows. Uh, but I went straight down and across to Ebber Gorge. So there's um, St. Lawrence Church. I've already videoed it quite a few times in the past. It's well videoed. And um, the weather looks dodgy. I'll just, put, I'll just point that out. I'm going to be heading for the Barrows. But this is just an introductory video. That I've arrived. Right, we're going to try Sony. It's the 11th of July 2024. It's an interesting little walk in through there, isn't it? Might be a little reserve. Anyway, I'm over pretty. Before I start on about that, England got through to the final of the Euros Championship. And they face very lively and very, very skillful Spain on Sunday evening. Yeah, we got through, we beat the Netherlands. And to be quite honest, I don't know whether the Netherlands held back. I just got this awful feeling that they didn't really go for it. I don't know. There's a lot of fixing. I'm not. I, I hope it's true that we've done it. I just something about it. They weren't really with it. The Netherlands. I just thought you were just sort of letting England score. We didn't do that brilliantly. It was a very very dodgy penalty for a start. So. And then someone came on in the last five minutes of the game and scored for us. And they got man of the match. Now I think that went right really. Just because he scored the goal, he wasn't in the match all the time. But all it is, he got England through to the final, that goal. It was on the 90th minute. And basically, his goal got England through. So they've rewarded him because of, just because of that. Just taking photos. I've walked along here before, this isn't new. There are other walks you can get on. If you want to go across a lot of wet fields, you can join up and come out further up on a, another track I do. But today, there's a um, pretty festival going on this weekend, so they're all busy preparing the ground for the festival. It's been going on for hundreds of years. It's like a, well, I think we used to call it Pretty Fair years ago. They called it a fair, not a festival. That's a modern term, festival. Um, it was an old thing that has gone on in the village for a long time. They have music and, oh, you know, dancing and pub, a pub would be open all day and different events going on. And all the guppy guppy yuppy yuppies on display and um, things like that. They're quite snobby still in the countryside, I'm afraid. Um, very, very conservative in, out here. Um, so. But this is our land as well. But a lot of land is owned by others. And uh, we have to follow the routes. When the sun comes out, 
it's quite nice in fact it could be very hot I mean at the moment I've put on a light shower proof jacket which is also it doesn't make you sweat as much it's got like netting inside which helps I'll be taking it off in a minute um, I don't think I'm going to need it on I might do when I get on the top I'll probably have to dodge cows again usually have to up here um, I'm not going over to the forest today um, I'm just going to wander through the mineries just for old time's sake you know really I've explored it all before and for those of you there's, I've got videos all over YouTube of my walks around here but I haven't done one here for quite a few years now probably a good five years maybe six it only seems like last week to me but I've got lots of bags heavy at the moment because I've got lots of um, fluids I was going to cut down on a bottle and I thought no don't because where you're going unless you ask a farmer there isn't anywhere to top up your drink um, that's the only thing there might be one farm that you could ask now I'm expecting there to be a lot of cows around today so I might have to do some hopscotching between fields um, it seems longer than usual this lane <laughs> anyway I'm just doing a bit of an introduction um, I've got a picnic I've got the you know, fluids like I said and then of course the fluids always weigh you down at the start of a walk the idea today is to walk up here get on the near the barrows it's going to be windy and it'd be awful if it rains because it'd be very exposed at the moment like a video the wind's not affecting the camera um, but it'd be probably I might try and fit a video in when I'm exposed to quite a breeze I just met a local jo uh, Jack bloke who told me they've had a lot of rain here lately so a lot of the fields will be quite boggy I presume but what I'm doing because you never know when a vehicle will pack up or something happens I'm going to fit in my local walks I haven't done for four years testing um, things out before thinking of venturing further afield like much further afield I've changed my plans a bit because um, Maggie Moo Zara's dog who was 17 the other day about a week ago she was 17 um, about 120 I think in dog years she died peacefully in her sleep on her chair she had one ear up Zara said her eyes were open she had so I did hear a chain soak which is the last breaths coming out of someone and she died peacefully but because it was late it was well I'd gone to bed I, I watched um, the other semi-final where Spain was, uh, was against France and I was very tired I was very tired I nearly fell asleep during the match so instead of sort of sometimes watching the news after I went to bed early most of the time I checked my Facebook before going to bed and I didn't I was so tired I hadn't even turned the computer on 
So I didn't know, and Zara wouldn't bang late at night on the door because there was nothing we could do. So she slept all night in the same room as Maggie. Maggie was dead on her little chair. It was one of my old armchairs, actually. With her favourite blankie and one of her toys. <sighs> Zara's totally gutted. So was I. I am gutted as well. But Zara... The dog has been with by her side for 16 years. Absolutely adored Zara, the dog. Zara said, I've lost my little guard. <sighs> I know she'll get another dog, but at the moment she's absolutely gutted. Because that dog was her friend. When Zara's had some bad times, and some really bad times, Maggie's been there, always there over the last 16 years when Zara's had some really rough times so she said to, for me to leave her alone for a day I hope she's going to be alright I do worry about her we went and took the dog to the kennels where they arranged for the cremation and then we'll get Maggie's ashes back in a week's time I've already got another little elephant because Brandy, Brandy has some of her ashes are still in the original container from the crematorium with a piece of her fur and a bit of her old blankie and and some nice little kind words from the crematorium people in a nice little box. Maggie will have the same. And by chance, what is weird, both these little elephants I found by chance. I found one, I found one elephant, little elephant, little decorated elephant, little tiny thing, with a little place where you can put something inside, like a message or, well I put, some of Brandy's ashes in that little elephant and when I went travelling on my family tree trip in 2014 and for lots of other trips I always took Brandy in the, in the, in, with the elephant I always carried her in my pocket and do you know what was weird the night before or was it the morning I was thinking I was planning I didn't know Maggie had died I was thinking about my trip and I said to myself, shall I take Brandy with me? Because it's a family tree trip. And in my mind, Brandy said, no, Sheila, I can't come. I've got to stay with Maggie. Now, not long after that, I saw a note under my door. First of all, I couldn't read it. I didn't realise you opened it up. It, it glued it was like a shape of a triangle and it shut close so I could only see like a, a ghost note so I had to hold it up to the window and later on I realised if you opened it you could read it properly and it was from Zara telling me that Maggie had died at 10.45 the night before so I went in and of course it was gutting and straight away we made arrangements because Zara had already slept or where she didn't sleep stayed in the room all night with Maggie dead on her chair you couldn't, we couldn't have done anything overnight anyway and she didn't want to wake me she thought don't disturb mum now we don't both want to be up anyway I, I, I contacted the kennels where, Ma, where Maggie had gone where Brandy had gone and they were very good and we, we took we took Maggie there. It was a very, very sad journey. We actually had to put her in a very... We wrapped her in her blankie and her sheets and everything. And then we found a very, very large, colourful bag to put her in. And we had a handle each. Zara tried to carry her. I said, she's very heavy, Zara. And she was. She weighed a tonne, actually. So we had a handle each and we walked, we had to walk up our road in order to get our lift to the crematorium. Well, not the crematorium, the kennels. They arranged for the crematorium to do something. I don't know exactly what, where it is. 
they do it all. And it was bloody awful. We took that little dog on a... We said, because I said to her, oh, we're going to go over... Before, I, I was hoping to take them to the apex. Because Maggie hadn't been well for a couple of... A good, good week. She suddenly went really downhill. And, um... It was, we all, me and Zara went for a coffee in Burnham on Sea. Zara was... We just... We, we had a little break before going back. And, and then when we got back, Sarah said, Mum, I need to be alone now for at least a day. So I said, OK. Well, there is Facebook. And I said to her, look, just come in. If you feel you want to come over for a coffee, Sarah, I won't put the bolt on the door like I normally do at night. I'll, I'll, I'll just have to use your key. But as far as I know, she didn't come over. But she could have done. Right, over and out. I'm going to stop there. That's a little reflection on the death of Maggie Moo. She died on the... Well, it was the 9th, actually. She died on the 9th of July, 2024, at 10.45 in the evening. Over and out.